Okay, so uh, good morning once again. And uh, this morning, now we will try to go into our Newton's second law lesson. And uh, again, uh, when, when we see this car, obviously what is in our mind is that uh, we we think no, that this eventually no, will go into the road and uh, eventually not drive. No, the driver will eventually uh, take the car and uh, drove himself in this car. No? So we, we will eventually think of motion when we see this vehicle. No? So it's a very nice vehicle. And again, our lesson four is on Newton's laws of motion. And we covered this in our first quarter exam. No? Uh, but there's a there's a there's a lesson here now on uh, on the second law now of Newton, which is called the law of acceleration, that we were not able to complete. Na? So we will take up that one. Na? But as a bit of a review, we are going to go through now with some of the lessons that we've covered here. Na? First of all, uh, when this car now, when that car earlier now is completely at rest we will realize that uh, we won't be able to uh, move it now unless you apply a force to that car now to make it move no? so the car will just rest on your driveway or on your garage no unless you start up the car and eventually you know uh, run the wheels no? Or you push the car, no? So even if the car is not in good condition, uh, there are people who will try to push it. No, here in the Philippines, we notice the, notice that a lot, no? When it won't start, no? Uh, people will be asked to push the car, no? So a car that is not running eventually, no, is uh, made to move, no? By by five or more people, no, pushing it. No? So again, no, unless we apply an outside force, this car will continue to be at rest. We call that as the inertia of the car. No? So if it's not moving, then it will just stay as as uh, as it is. No, that is at rest unless you uh, put a force around it. No? Now we call that force there as the net external force. So again, no, in a given car. Uh, we can never say that even though it's at rest that there are no forces acting on it. Huh? So even if we are not moving, forces will still be at play in a given body. Huh? So look at this. Huh? This one is at rest, but there's a force that pushes, pushes this one to the right. And then there's a force that pushes this one also to the left. Huh? And eventually, the thing is, the effect of these two forces together, which we call as a resultant, never amounts to anything equal rather than simply equal to zero. No? So therefore, this one will still not move. No? So we call the, the difference of the two forces there as the resultant force or the net force. No? However, in this case, the net force is eventually zero. No? So what will happen? The body will continue to be at rest. No? Now, a similar body, which is at rest as well, no? is acted on by two different forces. No? One, no? a bigger force going right, and one no? going left, which is 30. No? So therefore, if we will recall our, our graphical method of finding the resultant, no? we will see that we will have here a resultant value of 20. No? So that's 50 minus 30. And we will have a remaining value of 20 newtons. Now we call that as the resultant force. And it will eventually move no? the same as the bigger force F sub 2. No? So it will go to the right. Now, now this one illustrates to us that the net external force, no? which is now 20, will cause the body no? to change its state from rest into motion so this one will start to slide to the right now so now what happens here now because of the net external force the inertia of the body has been changed now and it will now accelerate to the right now so this positive value of a force now will result to an acceleration now so again now we, we we can either call this value as the net external force or the resultant force now so this one now changes the 
inertia of the body. So what is again inertia? It's the state of the body, no? the initial state of the body where in the body continues to be in that particular state. No? So if it's at rest, usually the body will remain at rest. If the body is in motion, then the body will continue moving no? unless you stop it or you cause it to accelerate even faster. No? So again, no? do, do, there are two states of inertia, either at rest or the body is already in motion. No? So when you have a body that is already in motion, you can keep it moving with constant velocity. Huh? The body will just slide right or left no? with a constant velocity unless you add an additional external force to it to make it stop or to increase its speed even higher. No? So again, huh? uh, whether at rest or in motion. And the, Again, now that's what I mentioned in this diagram. No? So the body could be in motion and keep it now with constant velocity, or you can make it accelerate even faster. No? Now, what do you notice when you are in, uh, in a state no, of uniform motion no, or uniform velocity? No? Now, probably when you are in a car or in, inside a plane, no? and you, we will try to imagine no, what, is, what it is, uh, like not to be in uniform motion. Um, when you drink your your uh, your uh, refreshments inside a plane, guys, no, and you notice that you don't feel no as though it's being thrown in some kind of a direction, then you are traveling inside the plane with uniform motion. No? So there are moments when the the plane flies, you know, with uniform motion, and you notice that the stewardess or the Flight attendants are now distributing the food. No? So you don't feel anything. No? You can go to the CR. You can drink your uh, whatever no? uh, that, they, that they offer you. And it won't spill on your clothes. No? Why? Because at that time, no, the plane is probably traveling with uniform motion. No? Now, but look or imagine no, if it is taking off or landing. No? And those drinks or those refreshments are being served. No? Just imagine what will happen to the people inside the plane. In the you are you are taking your your meal, for example, and the plane is taxiing, no, is about to land or about to take off, and you are taking a, a meal, no. So I don't think that you could you could uh, eat that well, no, because the plane is taking off, no? and uh, to some extent, no, probably the food that you will be taking in will spill on your clothes, no. So again, now you'll notice that it's not no, uh, possible to do that. So again, no, that's, that's the time when the body no, is accelerating. No? So there is a, an external force that is going on there. No? So again, no, the law of inertia, we've covered this already. No? And uh, one of the things that we know is about this is that the mass of the body is a measure of inertia. No? So bigger objects tend to remain as they are. No? when they are subjected to change of state. No? Like no, a sudden stop will probably not create a little effect on bigger and more massive objects than for those who are lesser in mass. No? So those with lesser mass, if there's a sudden stop, then these little or smaller masses will eventually move a little bit bigger. No? Now, allow me to... Um, illustrate to you a, a very practical illustration or uh, an experience of mine no? when, when I was commuting in a jeepney. Now today the jeepney, no, if you have taken one, there are now barriers. No? The, the seats are covered with these plastic barriers to prevent uh, the, what, the contamination of the COVID virus. But there was a time when these seats are completely... No? Uh, not separated from each passenger. No? It's a completely open seat. It's a very long seat. And, and often when we take a jeepney ride, no, we want to sit at the last, no, at the end part of the chair there no, inside the jeepney because we don't want to pass on the, the fare, no, the amount of money that people are, are asking you to give to the driver. No? So you don't want to sit at the last or the end part of the chair no so uh, at one time i was uh, taking a ride no from 
uh, from CPU to no, to my to the city proper. No? So I'm taking this Haro CPU direction on Jeep. No? And uh, we are now going into uh, into the cathedral, no? from CPU to the cathedral. And um, I was seated. No? There were there were only two passengers at that time, me, no? and the uh, elementary student from CPU also. No? So we both take the ride of the jeepney from CPU, and somewhere near no? Haro Plaza, no? uh, there was this uh, again no? the the one that I'm in front of. No? Since we we were both seated at the at the end no? of the chair near no? the part where you go down, no? so you are always thinking of not passing the fare again. No? And now when when the jeepney driver, no? since the jeepney driver was running kind of a little fast at that time. And he in the jeepney is already in front of the of the church, no, of the cathedral. Now the, suddenly the, the jeepney driver stepped onto the brake, no? and, and notice what happens, no. Now we were both at the end of the jeepney, and all of a sudden, no, I noticed the the passenger in front of me, no, the little kid, no, the elementary student, that this student slides, no, towards the 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 in in the chair, no, and the uh, reaches, no the end where the driver is sitting and then bumps no and uh, kibot you ng student no the student laughed eventually because again no? between me and that that student no uh the the student since she was smaller uh has this big change in her now that she eventually slides no but ako ya uh nothing really happened to me no because again no talking about mass of the body no so the mass of the body will not Cause you to change a lot, no? But uh, again, no? uh, I saw the smile in the face of that student because again, no, nagslide gid sa kag nabunggo, napit sa my driver, no? So again, I'm talking about Newton's first law, no? Uh, for Newton's second law, again, that's the law of action. Uh, that's the law of acceleration. No? We realize that there are probably two factors involved, no? When a net force is present, no? And that uh, that net force no is a product of the mass of the body times its given acceleration no? again this acceleration is a result of not just one force no guys but this this is already an accumulation of several other forces no so again now we call this force again as a net external force no so again if this force is larger than we expect that this acceleration will also be higher no now, when, when, when you have a body that is more massive, maybe you will need also a bigger force to move it. No? However, when the body is more massive, then it has lesser acceleration. So these two, the mass and the acceleration, has a kind of uh, relationship that is inversely proportional. No? More massive body have lower acceleration. Smaller or lesser massive bodies no? will have a greater acceleration and we can we can sum up that uh, law of acceleration in this equation no? that this is called as the net external force no? if i may write it no? so we basically called it not, not merely as a force there but it's called as a net force no? so i call it f net it's equals to mass times your given acceleration no? So what is again our value there? So F net is our is known as our net external force. And again, M is our mass of the body. And in that mass is, equ is uh, equated in kilograms. No? Okay, so we have the mass of the body and we have, a, lastly, you know, the acceleration. No? Uh, are you there, guys? Any question from your end? No questions. Uh, any questions? None. No questions, sir. Yes, what's the question? 
Ay, wala, wala. No question, sir. So, uh, so we have this one. Uh, um, so we've somehow covered this. So if if you will notice here that, again, uh, um, a value, no? so our unit of force, guys, no? is known as no? Newton. No? So a one Newton force, if we look at this, no? a one Newton force is equivalent to one kilogram mass multiplied by an acceleration which is also one meter per second square. No? So that's our that's our equivalent for our value of Newton. No? So um, what, one, uh, one common uh, value, guys, that we can also no, think of. So one common thing that we can also think of Um, just a moment. No? I'm trying to annotate this. So can you notice that this is now squared, guys? No? So this S here is a squared value. Huh? So uh, we write a 2 there. No? So this is a squared value. And uh, our uh, our one of the thing also that we can also consider is weight no? so the weight of a body is actually no? a kind of a force no? so weight guys no? how do we calculate the weight of the body so if the weight of the body is w no? it is actually equals to the mass of the body times the acceleration due to gravity no? so it's very similar to this equation no? so weight being also a kind of a force is multiplied now to get its value is equivalent to the mass of a given body. And this time the acceleration should be the acceleration due to gravity. No? So for example, if I have a, a kind of a box guys, no? so this box no? is uh, resting pro probably on a given table no? or on a surface. So if, if this one has a mass of, let's say it's mass, no? its mass is equal to so M no? being the mass. So supposing that's around eight kilograms of mass. No? So it's, uh, its weight definitely will be going down. No? So if we will illustrate the weight, so the weight is always downward. So we indicate the symbol of the weight to be W, no? So how much is this weight, no? So how do we determine the value of our weight there, no? So again, now using our equation, if we will think of our equation, no? So let me check if somebody is in the... Okay, so again, now how much is our weight here? So we know G to be equivalent to 9.8, no? And we always think of it as negative, correct? Now, if we will simply consider weight as a magnitude, then we don't need to write the negative sign. No? Now, I want you to get a calculator. So I want you to multiply 8 kilograms with 9.8 no? meter per second square no, value. No? So again, no? the value there is a squared quantity. Okay, so that's the squared quantity of our value. No? And uh, how much will be our value eventually? 78.4. Okay, so we, we end up with a value that is no, equivalent to 78. Did you I hear you right? How much is the exact value, 78 point? Four. Point four. Okay, and I will write a big letter N. Huh? What's the meaning of big letter N? Newton. Newton. So that's our value of Newton. Huh? So you'll notice that again, weight is a, has a similar expression as our second law equation called as net force. Huh? Okay, so again, now this is how we determine. So this one will eventually be expressed in Newton. But more often, we can imagine even better 8 kilograms. No? 
can you can you imagine how much is 78.4 without even supposing you don't know that it's, it's equivalent to eight kilograms no so you will you cannot really imagine this no but we can we can imagine a bit better no uh, a mass no rather than an expression in 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 terms of newton no? now in an environment where there's no gravity again what will be the weight of the body if g there is zero what will be the product of zero and eight zero so you have zero newton no? so in a weightless environment now like you're in the outer space your mass is constant but your weight eventually becomes zero because there's no more acceleration due to gravity no? so this one could vary a lot no? depending on the degree or magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity no? Uh, in what locations do you find lesser gravity again no? if from our previous discussion? So in places like you are near water surfaces now compared to rocky mountain areas, no? there's less gravity there. No? Or if you are at a higher altitude, no? as you go up higher, then we experience that this one will eventually decrease. No? So again, no? we can change the weight eventually to become zero. No? So again, now uh, talking about Newton's uh, second law. No? Now, this is the only law of Newton where we will deal with some sort of an equation. No? So this is not a very no? uh, this this is a very simplified version. No? But we can take this now to a whole lot of other expressions wherein we can see now uh, its application. No? So, but uh, for now, now um, let's move on. No? So I'll, I'll erase this. So We've covered this, no? and uh, moving on, no? uh, we can actually no, apply some kind of uh, an example here, no? uh, based on our Newton's law. No? So I'm trying to scroll this down. No? So from that equation, we see that there's a proportional relationship between the mass and the net force, between the force and the acceleration. No? They are directly proportional. However, uh, the mass and the acceleration are inversely proportional. No? So that's uh, the statement of our law of acceleration. So in, in one short statement, we can also say that mass is no? inversely proportional to acceleration. We can also summarize the second law in that way. Now, again, now there are other things about that one. Now, for the third law, we have the action and reaction. And one typical thing about action and reaction, you can see now that while this weight is going down, we can have the weight of the body there not to be directed downward. Okay, so... Um, let me annotate now. So this one is, again, now a weight that is going down. And we realize that that value is 78.4. No? But in the same way, there's also a force no, that will begin from the bottom and will go upward, no opposite to this given weight. No? Again, now we realize that uh, the length of the arrow always indicates no, the magnitude of the force. This one, this one is a little bit longer. No? But in, in the opposite direction, no, there's actually a force also that goes up opposite to the weight. No? So if this is our floor, there is a force that we call as a normal force no? that is always perpendicular to the surface. No? So we call this as the normal force and we also write it as big letter N. No? So please do not confuse this with the unit Newton and the symbol of the force N. No? And again, now this normal force is uh, is always no ninety degrees. It is always ninety degrees now. So if we think of this now as our uh, force now, so this uh, box, guys, that I'm writing indicates that this is actually ninety degrees. No? So it's perpendicular. So this one is ninety degrees or it's right angle now with the surface. No? So the, the floor is our surface here. No? So the nature of the normal force is that it is 
perpendicular to the surface. No? Now the weight may change its direction no? depending on how you position this. No? But somehow, no? now but what's the thing about Newton's law of action and reaction related to the weight and the normal force n? No? So based on the law of action and reaction, when an object exerts a force downward, the, the surface here will also kind of create a reaction. No? So this is our action, the weight. The reaction is the normal force that goes up. No? And according to the law of action and reaction, the, the normal force is equivalent to the weight. No? So again, for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. No? So the reaction is the normal force. And they share a kind of a value that is no, equivalent. No? Now, um, so much so, guys, no, that, uh, again, no, if they are equal, then this body will not move up or down. No? Okay, so again, no, we think of the normal force as our reaction. No? Now, what are other things that we can think of in terms of action and reaction example? No? So a racket no, that goes up no, or is now uh, launched at a, at a certain no, uh, place. So it will not go up and carry the its payload, no, like satellites and other things that they will put in space, unless they will have this booster of fuel that has to burn no, downward. And uh, this huge amount of fuel being burned downward will propel the rocket up. No? So the rocket will go up now because of the reaction. No? So that's a very typical example of action and reaction. No? Now in some physics, uh, activity you know, or in some physics uh, uh, convention or events, you know, they have this uh, water, I think water uh, propelled you know, rockets. They, they are creating an event, you know, a competition wherein they will uh, measure how, which, you know, which design you know, will propel a, a water filled uh, uh, pet battle no? and uh, which one will go higher no? than the other no? uh, other contestants. So it's measured in terms of the height of the propelled object. No? So again, no? um, maybe no? In, at, at, at one point I will show you a video about that. No? A water propelled uh, pet bottle. No? In those soft drinks, bottle, they will fill it up with so much pressure of water that it will move up. No? Okay, so again, uh, talking about action and reaction. Uh. Okay, so I think uh, we have nine minutes. So in case we are we are cut, guys, now I want you to take note to uh, uh, click the link again. Uh. Um, so that's uh, that's the Newton's third law. Uh. Now for our sample problem, let's look at this sample problem. Uh, and this is now probably related to our... Uh, uh, Newton's second law. No? So only in the second law where we have uh, an expression. No? So allow me to erase this one. No? And let's take up no, this example, no, which will probably make use of our idea no, of Newton's second law. So the law of acceleration, which is again, F net is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's take up the given values. No? So we are told about a 15 Newton force no? that acts on a body that has a mass of 90 kilograms. No? So we are to find the acceleration of the body. No? So if we will transform our equation here and look for acceleration. So acceleration must be equals to F net. No? And we will divide it no? with the mass of the body. No? So, so we will have this expression now. No? And again, no, it's a simple division and uh, a substitution. No? So if we will try to calculate this. No? So this is now equivalent to 15 Newtons. And can you please now calculate with me? Divide by 90 kilograms. And what is our answer here? We divide by 15. Zero. We have how much? Zero, zero point? 
one six. Did I hear you right? One six. Zero point seven, sir. One seven. So what's now the unit? If you divide newton by kilogram, what's now our remaining unit? So since that's acceleration, it is in meter per second. Second square. Huh? So don't forget the squared expression for our na, seconds, na, a unit. Na? So this is basically our answer. Na? Uh, so that's a simple na, conversion of our expression there. Na? In uh, So that's uh, merely na, dividing the two. Na? Now, uh, let's have another one. A body starting from rest acquires a velocity of 18 centimeter per second. Notice that we have now a different unit. No? So this is now in centimeter, seconds, and our body mass is in grams. So if you recall, no? our unit in kilogram, meter, and second square, this is known as MKS. No? So therefore, Newton is an MKS unit. No? So Newton is part of MKS. So we have another set of units, guys, no? which we call a CGS. No? Please uh, try to recall your... MKS, no? and which again, which we call as the meter, kilogram, no? second unit, and the other one is the CGS or the centimeter, gram, no? second unit. So we don't mix up the two. No? So if they're in, centi in, in centimeters, seconds, and grams, so they, they should belong to CGS. Now, now, what is our unit of force for MKS? It's called Newton. While in CGS, guys, no, our unit of force is in dynes. No? So this is our corresponding unit of force. No? So a dyne value, we don't use it often because it's a very small quantity. No? So eventually, if you will try to find the force here now, so F net. So that's equals to mass, which is 15 grams. No? So you have 15 grams, divide or times now. So if you have, if you have a, a value now that starts from rest. So you have to calculate first the acceleration, sorry. No? So the acceleration has to be computed. No? So our acceleration is Bf minus V sub i no? divided by the time. So therefore, if you'll try to replace the value here, no? what will be our expression? So V sub f, final velocity is 18 centimeter per second no? minus zero okay, yung initial velocity is zero and then we divide it with a time equal to three seconds no? okay so what is our answer here please what is our acceleration now six centimeter so we have here a six centimeter acceleration Six centimeter per second square. No? So if you'll try to multiply it with our equation above, no? six centimeter per second square. No? So how much is 15 times six? No? 90. 90. So we have 90 dynes as our answer. No? So again, now the thing that we miss here are the squared values. So this must be second square, centimeter per second square. This is also centimeter per second square. No? So how much is our answer here earlier? Six, no? So we have an answer here, which is six centimeter per second square. No? Okay, so do you have a question? So here, this is a two-step problem because you have to calculate first your 
acceleration, and then you have to calculate next your F net. No? So again, uh, that's our value or answer for this problem. No? So cal uh, calculating the acceleration and again, the net force. No? So again, no? you cannot combine together when you're dealing with kilogram, meter, and seconds no? with grams and centimeter and second. No? So please take note of the corresponding equivalent uh, unit of forces. No? Okay, so we have uh, a minute not to go and at any point we will be cut. So uh, let me just show no, maybe the next example there. No? Um, so perhaps now uh, I can give this as a seat work to you. Can you copy it now? And uh, maybe now while you are cut now or uh, connecting, you can uh, you can uh, answer this now. Okay, maybe now we will be cut in less than a minute. So kindly copy the problem, please, and answer number three. No? Screenshot, please. No? 